Hey everyone, I finished watching the next uh, Power Rangers Ninja Storm episode, Scent of a Ranger. This is a really good episode. I didn't remember liking this one as much as I like it now. This is probably one of my favorite episodes so far of VR Trooper, of Ninja Storm. I just watched VR Troopers a second ago, so I've got that on my mind. Anyway, Ninja Storm, uh, this is, um... Like, I guess, kind of a cam focus episode? So sort of. I'll get to that. So, at the beginning, the rangers and sensei are worried that Cam is overworking himself, being a ranger and also running ninja ops at the same time. And then at Storm Chargers, uh, Blake comes up to Tori, and he insists that she try this new cologne that they just got in at the store, and she doesn't like it, but she's polite and puts it on anyway. And... I thought this was going to play a bigger part in the episode, like, the clone was going to come back as, like, a MacGuffin or something, but, nope. It never comes back. It's just a weird little scene at the beginning, and there's a funny little bit where Dustin comes in and says, Whoa, smells like my grandma's feet in here. And Tori's like, your grandma's been dead for ten years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's gross. <laughs> And it's, like, really dark humor, like, uh, for Power Rangers, relatively. Like, I'm trying to think, is there ever a joke like that? Ever? <laughs> yeah, sometimes Ninja Storm went kind of far with their humor, like, farther than Power Rangers usually would. Something like that kind of stands out as, like, that's more of, like, something you'd expect from, like, a typical sitcom, not really Power Rangers. Anyway, forget all that, because it means nothing to the rest of the episode. Up on uh, Lothor's spaceship... Uh, oh, yeah, uh, the whole cologne thing. It doesn't really serve any practical anything to the episode, but it is there to parallel the monster that Zergane introduces to Lothor, Fragra. She can turn people into perfume. Sure, why not? We had monsters that could turn people into footballs and pachinko balls and... Oh wait, didn't we have an episode where the rangers got turned into, like, liquids or something back in Mighty Morphin? Yeah, this is a very Mighty Morphin-style monster. It's, like, got a very clear theme and it does a thing related to that theme that isn't super clever or anything, but it's... It's fine. It works. Anyway, at Ninja Ops, the rangers meet with Cam, and Cam is acting really weird. He's dressed, like, super casually. He's talking with surfer dude lingo. Yo, Tori Tor. I love when he says Tori Tor. I don't know why, I just thought that was so funny. I remember as a kid just loving that. That was hilarious. Anyway, the others have no idea what's going on, but they go along with him. And as they leave Ninja Ops, they sh uh, the camera pans over, and we see in this shadowy corner is Cam in the ninja gear, all tied up and gagged. Huh. What's going on here? Who's, who's, who are they with? Why is Cam tied up? What's going on here? So then, uh, the rangers are hanging out with, I'll just call him Imposter Cam. Because as far as we know, this is not Cam. It's not acting like Cam. Anyway, uh, let's see, they go out to, uh, oh yeah, they go surfing. They play, like, sock footage of some guy surfing, and then they have Cam go up, and they're all like, Whoa, Cam, you can surf, it's amazing. And it's really weird. I never really thought about it that much, but I'm wondering, was the stock footage of the guy supposed to be Cam? Because it doesn't look anything like Cam. His hair is different, his face is different, he has a completely different color outfit on. The surfboard, I don't even think, is the same surfboard. I don't know, really weird. I don't know, maybe they didn't have footage of Jason Chan surfing, maybe he can't surf? So they just thought, oh, we'll just splice in some footage of the ocean. I don't know, it feels like they could have just cut to him just walking out of the water. Whatever, anyway. Uh, while all that's going on, Fragra is attacking the city, turning people into perfume bottles. The rangers go to battle Fragra, but uh, Imposter Cam doesn't want to go. He wants to go uh, motocross, uh, driving, riding, whatever. Anyway, 
Eventually, he reluctantly comes along and then immediately gets distracted by this uh, fancy sports car. So he goes over, whoa, the new model, I didn't know it was out. And the other rangers are like, what's he, wh huh? Anyway, they morph, they fight Fragra. And then, uh, let's see, da -da -da -da. Fragra turns Dustin and Tori into perfume bottles and then retreats. The other rangers go to talk to imposter cam and they're like dude what's going on and then cam's like whoa what's your problem two of us were just turned into perfume bottles and he's like uh yeah and and they're like whatever and they leave him there and i love that they just leave imposter cam there with the car anyway uh the real cam frees himself and joins the other rangers and the others are like uh and then the other cam comes in, and they're like, whoa, what's going on? And then, I'll see, da, 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 da. the rangers are confused, and cam explains that he created a virtual replicant to help out with his work at Ninja Ops. And then he takes out a thing, presses a button, and virtual cam disappears. This always confused me, and it's one of those weird things when Power Rangers are... Well, a lot of things, they didn't really seem to understand technology. Like, that shouldn't work. Whoa. What just happened there? My notes jumped around. Okay. Anyway. This is a weird... Like, it's a common thing in Power Rangers to have some sci-fi technology and they don't really know how to how it's supposed to work. Like, all the stuff that Cybercam did would have only worked if he was a physical thing, but he isn't. Or Cam teleported him to the Ninja Ops. They can tell... I don't know, maybe it's safe to teleport Cybercam, but not people? I don't know what's going on. Whatever, anyway, um... It's kind of like in the past in Power Rangers, I'm trying to remember what it was. There was something really specific I was thinking of. In Zeo, there's an episode where there's this robot, but it's not clear if it's like a robot or a person in a suit. They kind of go back and forth on what it is. In the end, it's like, yep, it's definitely a robot. It's a super advanced robot, and they're just treating it really casually. And... It's not even the last time Power Rangers would do something like that. And they still do it now in Ninja Steel with Redbot. Like, I don't know, at the same time they act like he's really advanced, but then they're also really casual about the fact that we have, like, this extremely advanced robot walking around and everyone just treats it normally. Oh, and the other thing is uh, in SPD there's a character that they call a cyborg. And I don't think they knew what Cyborg meant. I think this is something the older series did, too. At some point or another, they mentioned Cyborg, and it's not Cyborg. Cyborg stands for Cybernetic Organism, which is, like, organism, organic. Something there is, like, a real person with, like, robot parts added in, right? But they treat the person like they're they're not human at all. It's really weird. Whatever. Back to the actual, like, episode uh, summary thing. Let's see. The only explanation we get from Cybercam about why he tied up real cam was, uh, I must have gotten a little overexcited. Okay. And I really wonder, uh, why did Cam allow himself to get tied up? How did he even get... Like, how did that happen? I'm really curious why in the world, like, how did it get to the point where Cybercam was like, I'm going to tie up normal cam so I can go out and have fun. <laughs> it's so f I would love to see that. So anyway, um, da -da 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 -da. Fragra appears and uh, attacks them. Shane uh, slips away. He's able to find all the people Fragra transformed and releases them. Cam powers up, defeats Fragra. Lothor makes her grow, the rangers call the zords and defeat her again. Oddly, Blake and Hunter sit this one out, they don't call their zords. Like, I know, Japanese footage and all that, but it seems like you could have given them something to do. Like, maybe they get turned into perfume bottles at the last minute, and 
Uh, so they can't call their Zords, so then the Rangers defeat Fragra, and then... And then they turn back to normal or something? I don't know. Something. Because it's just really weird that they're completely left out of this. So then at Ninja Ops, the Rangers see Cybercam, and Cam assures them that he's reprogrammed Cybercam to be dedicated to his work. But Cybercam is still a bit of a goofball. And then the real Cam goes out motocross riding and realizes, oh, this is really fun. So it turns out real Cam also likes motocross riding. So like I said earlier, I really like this episode way more than I remember. I don't remember this episode being, like, as fun as it was. It was a really fun episode, and I love Cybercam. He's such a, like, a cool addition to the to the team. He's a really unique type of character for Power Rangers. We haven't had, like, uh, like an assistant at the command center for a long time. Let's see. Up till now, Cam has kind of filled that role of an assistant to the mentor who stays at the base, but now with him becoming a ranger, yeah, we don't have somebody like that. So Cybercam kind of fills in that spot. And with his, like, really upbeat, happy attitude, it kind of reminds me of uh, a bit of Alpha 6, if Alpha 6, like, in Turbo, if Alpha 6 was more enthusiastic and not kind of a jerk at times. <laughs> So, um, let's see. Oh, and also the other cool thing about Cybercam is he allows Jason Chan, the actor, to really stretch his acting muscles and show a completely different side, like, of his abilities and talents. That's really cool, because Jason Chan's a cool guy. I like him. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, we never get a good explanation for why or how Cybercam tied up normal Cam. I, I don't know. It's really funny to think about. Um, one of the things I really liked was, um, Cybercam when he gets distracted by the car and the other rangers just leave him there. And I kind of wonder why at that point the other rangers didn't suspect Cybercam to be like a clone or like an implant or Cam under a spell or something. They even drop a reference to a Beauty and the Beach way back at the beginning when there's a double of Tori made. One of the rangers, I think Shane or Dustin, says, didn't we already do a clone story? And, um, yeah. Also, interestingly, I think this is the second time that they specifically reference that episode. That's really weird. For, like, one, like, not even super important episode to keep coming up. Like, it's only happened twice, but it's like that meme. It's weird that it happened twice. So, um, let's see, da, 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 da. maybe that episode was a favorite of the writers or the actors? Ninja Storm does feel like the kind of season where the actors were given a lot of, uh, like, like, freedom to explore and ad-lib and do stuff that they wanted with their characters. A lot of current seasons don't really feel like they have that. It feels very like they're stuck in the script and they can't deviate from that. We don't really get a whole lot of personality from the Rangers, like, on the side of their actors. That's something I really miss in Power Rangers, is way back in the original series and now in the Disney era, the actors had a lot of freedom to express themselves through the characters, and I feel like that's something that's really missing in the current seasons, and it's one of the reasons why I really like Ninja Storm. Ninja Storm is such a fun show, and it's purely because of the actors, if... You had any other cast in Ninja Storm, it would feel completely different because the actors have such a chemistry with each other in Ninja Storm. Um, dun, dun, dun. Nothing else to say about this one? This was a really fun episode. I loved it. Definitely one of my favorites of Ninja Storm, and I would not have expected that because, like, this isn't an episode I remembered really well, like, ever on any previous watch through or when I was a teenager watching Ninja Storm. Uh, this episode. Like, really stands out now. I don't know, really. Maybe it's because I'm, like, looking really deep into it, and I'm seeing, like, how much effort went into the episode, and how clever everything was utilized. Except for Cam and... Or, yeah, Blake and Hunter not really playing a part in the Zord fight. That was weird. They just kind of disappear. And the whole episode, Blake and Hunter just kind of drift in and out, and it's really weird. I don't know why they made that particular choice. I feel like they could have worked them in better, but whatever. Um... Yeah. Hope you enjoyed this. See ya.